So I want I just want to start off with like a few interesting facts about Korea. I thought that would kind of um, be maybe funny and interesting. So just to get like an idea of um, you know what Korea is like, and um, yeah. So interesting facts about South Korea. South Korea um, for the Americans out here is about the si same size as Indiana. And actually, South Korea, or the U.S., sorry, the U.S. is 99 times bigger than South Korea. So South Korea is quite small, quite a small country. Um, and, uh, yeah, I love, you know, just taking the car and then just going on different road trips. It's really fun because everything is quite uh, uh, compact. <laughs> so you can drive down, you know, uh, to the beach uh, in like an hour or so. There's always like a beach nearby. It's it's really great. But um, I actually have a map of Korea in the next slide and I can talk a little bit more about, you know, what the country is like itself. But yeah, also there are more than 3000 islands around South Korea. So I think not a lot of people know that, that actually there's a lot of islands. And um, Jeju is the biggest island in South Korea. Oh, Lou said, uh, I would love I would love to stay for more, but I need to go to work now. Thanks so much for tuning in, though, Luz. You can watch the playback. You can watch the replay later. It'll stay on our page and on YouTube. Thanks so much and have fun at work. <laughs> Great. Okay. So, yeah, Jeju Island is the biggest um, island in Korea. It's a popular tourist destination, especially nowadays, because we can't really travel abroad. So a lot of people are going down to Jeju. Um, you can actually take a plane from Seoul to Jeju. It takes like an hour. It's very fast, or actually under an hour. Um, and it's really, really nice. <laughs> Amy says it's the size of Indiana that is mind blowing. Yeah, right? <laughs> so it's quite small. And that's only South Korea, not the whole peninsula. So only South Korea, but yeah, it is very small. <laughs> yeah, then approximately 9.7 million people live in Seoul. And actually, Seoul, so Seoul is the capital city. And that's where most people live. And Seoul and its surrounding um, areas, that's where 40% of the whole population lives. Around 40%. It's what they always say. Um, so it's very, it can get very crowded in Seoul. And um, yeah, apartment prices are really high there. And the cost of living is a little bit higher than, you know, the rest of the country. Um, traffic is crazy in Seoul because, you know, just 40% of the whole population live in the area. So it can get quite crowded, especially in different, depending on, you know, where you are visiting, which part of Seoul. Um, so, yeah, I do not live in Seoul. I live about an hour and a half south of Seoul. I'm going to show you that in the next slide. Um, and I love Seoul. I go up there a lot. But uh, it can get crowded, and um, I do. Uh, I'm always. I always feel like relieved when I go back home. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it's also an interesting fact. The next one: South Koreans are one year old when they are born. So that's something that a lot of foreigners can't really wrap their head around. It's kind of a strange system. But yeah, you're when you're born in South Korea, you're already one year old, and um, then. Also, everybody turns one year older on January 1st. So that's also very interesting. So imagine that. Mm, for example, my husband, he was born in uh, September. So when he was born in September, he was already one. And then three months later, January 1st, he turns two. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Even though he's actually, what, three or four months old, but he's two in Korea. So, um, yeah, that's one of their interesting systems. That's why when you come to Korea as a foreigner, they ask you how old you are. They're always like Korean age or American age because they're different. And you'll be older in Korea. <laughs> Just to let you know, you'll be older, either one or two years older, depending on when you're born. But, um, yeah, that's always something that kind of I think is really crazy and very unique to Korea. I don't know any other place that does that. Um, let me know. If uh, there's a, another place that does it like that, I don't know. 
Uh, Amy asks, and then he still celebrates his birthdays in September. So, um, yes, it's kind of like nowadays. So the younger generation, they celebrate their birthday on their actual birthday. But like the older generations, they usually follow the lunar calendar. So they would celebrate their lunar birthday, which um, is different every year. So like in our calendar, like the Western calendar, I guess. Um, so my parents-in-law, they kind of celebrate their birthday according to the lunar calendar. So every year, I have no idea when their birthday is because I don't follow the lunar calendar. So it's kind of, yeah, it's difficult. But like the younger generation, they follow like the Western calendar and also everything that's like official, like for getting like an ID or a license or whatever, they um, follow the, um, the Western calendar. So for official things. But um, that's just one of those little cultural things that they do. But um, I heard that this system kind of causes problems for some kids, especially those who are born, you know, at the end of the year, because they, like I said, they are one and then they turn two a few months later. So they're actually a few months old, but they're considered as being two in Korea. And then they're in the same class with older kids. And so some of them have disadvantages because of that. So I heard that they might kind of change that, but um, I have no idea. But that's just, yeah, it's something crazy. <laughs> so, um, okay, Amy's asking, so basically everyone gets a bonus two years, birth and the first. Yeah, sorta, yeah. But there's no two birthdays a year. So yeah, everybody's turning one year older on January 1st. But then like, <clears throat> that's like officially. And then you also celebrate your own birthday on your actual birthday. But like, it's just some, like, it's symbolic. You don't like age two years in one year. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's complicated. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know who came up with that or like why it's like that. I have no idea, but that's just how it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Then um, also very interesting to know that all men before 30 have to complete between 21 and 24 months of military service in Korea. That's basically because technically, and I don't want to get into the whole history of things, but technically, you know, Korea is still at war with North Korea. Um, they, you know, technically, officially, they are still at war. They never signed an end of war agreement. Um, so that's why, you know, the military power is still very strong and they are, you know, for protection and security. So all the men, they must... Um, commit to 21 to 24 months of military service before turning 30. And a lot of men do that um, actually during university. They would do like one year of university, then like take a break, do their military service, then come back and finish the university. So <clears throat> things like, oh, excuse me, things like that. So that's just something to know. If you're um, dating a Korean, make sure he has completed his military service or you're going to end up waiting for him for two years. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the last fun fact that I added in because we're very close to Valentine's Day is uh, another interesting fact um, that on Valentine's Day, so on February 14th, it's the women that give um, chocolates and gifts to their to the men, so to their husbands or boyfriends. Um, to show their love. So it's the opposite, sort of. And then, um, so on February 14th, it's the women giving the men chocolates, chocolates and gifts. And then a month later, on March 14th, um, the men give the women chocolates and gifts. So there's sort of two Valentine's Days. <laughs> Actually, um, every month, every 14th of the month has like a special kind of couple holiday. Um, Korea is a lot about couple culture. It's a huge thing. Like people wear couple clothes. You go out, you see people wearing like matching outfits, matching shoes, matching anything matching. So they love um, showing off that they're a couple. 
And so um, it just turned out that every 14th of the month is a special couple holiday. So this can be like Valentine's Day. Then I think March 14th is called, I think it's called White Day. Um, then there's like, is there like a, like a chocolate day? Then the other one is like a flower holiday. You get flowers. The other one is like for jewelry. The other one is for taking, I think, couple pictures or I don't know. But um, yeah, so technically every 14th of the month is a couple holiday. You can look that up. Um, I'm not. We're not doing that, my husband and me. Uh, we're just doing Valentine's Day. But um, yeah, that's what's happening. Thanks so much for watching. We are ITTT, the leading provider for TEFL and TESOL training courses. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.